Now we're going to talk about some variations you can make to your Click the Pixie game. Right now your program should be working pretty well. And you could turn it in, but you have some extra time. So you might as well make some changes, do some variations or modifications to your program to make it uniquely yours. Here are some, su here are some suggestions. You can make the duration a random number. You can display your counter on the screen as you play. You can use an array instead of just one pixie. And you can also use a variable for the duration so that you can have easy, medium, or hard. I'm going to show you some of these different examples. So first let's talk about just changing the delay to a random number. This is going to be the easiest variation. We have our delay right here and we set it at 1 or 2 or whatever you have it. We can change this to a random number. So I can pick a random number here. I'm going to just pick my own range, pick any two numbers as my placeholders. And I can decide if I want to go from maybe 0.5 to 2.5. That's a pretty big range right there. You could have it a little bit smaller, maybe 1.5 to 2.5, something like that. Then I also might want to go into my introduction and change it because my introduction says that you have one second. So I could just change, take out that line altogether or say you have a random amount of time. But adjust your introduction and now we're going to run this program and see that the alien can stay at many different types. Times. So sometimes slow, sometimes quick. That's what we get with random. So that's one variation you can make to your program. The next variation we're going to talk about is to add the text on the screen. So right now we have the variable, but it's not showing because variables work behind the scenes. If I want to display the value of the variable, I need a text for that. So I already went to set up scene, and I went to the shapes and text, and I dragged up a text model. I changed the name. I'm calling mine alien counter, or count aliens, and I put a little text in there. So if you want to add the text, go ahead and, add, and go to your scene editor and add something for that. Then we're going to return to our code and we're going to make a couple changes. So here's my text string right now and I want to add in the value of the counter. I'm going to do that here in my loop. So as soon as I count on it, I want to be able to change this or update it. Okay, so that's going to be a set value property. I'm going to drag up the set value property right here in my loop. It'll be the last thing I do. I'm going to put custom string here. So I'm going to say aliens clicked so I can kind of keep track. I have a colon and I include a space. Now I also want to add to this. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to go to the add. So I'm going to keep the aliens clicked. Then I want to add a, cus a uh, whole number, which is my counter. So this should display the counter. Let's give it a try. Hopefully I'll be able to click on one and we'll see that it changes. Okay, so that's pretty handy if you can actually display your clicked. So that's another variation that you can add to your program if you want to. Now another thing we can do is add some more aliens. We can create an, an array of aliens and have them popping up all over the screen. So you're going to need to set up your scene again and you're going to add some more aliens in. So you can search by theme and you can, or by group. You can find your alien and drag them up or whatever your character is. So you can drag them up and add some more characters, kind of scatter them around the corners, and ha you can have as many as you want. So I've added some aliens, so I've got four. You can have more than that. And they're kind of scattered all over, and I'm going to use some smaller random numbers and have them just kind of move a little bit from where they are and have it pick a random alien to pop up. So let's edit our code. The first thing I'm going to do is come to pop up, but I'm going to have all these numbers be quite a bit smaller because it's just going to be a small range that I want them to go to. So I might just use uh, 1 or 1 1.5 and a negative 1.5 here. Okay. 
and um, I might make this just a negative one and a one, and then I might make this one um, negative point six and point six. So I'm just going to make my numbers quite a bit smaller. so that each alien just moves a little bit. Now you could keep them bigger if you want to, you just have to be a little bit careful. And when I pick which alien is going to pop up, I can use a random number for this. Okay. Now here in the program I want to add in the array so I can change this alien to any random alien from the array list. So in the past we've done it as a parameter, but I can actually create a variable that's an array I'm going to drag up the variable tile, and I'm going to put it at the beginning just because we often do variables that way. So it's a variable, it is going to be an array, and it is my biped. I'm going to call it things just to separate it out, and for initializer, I'm going to do my custom array right here, so it's all going to be included. I'm just going to add all my aliens. To the array. So there it is. Now I can change this right here. My alien is now part of this array. If I click it here, it's going to be able to give me um, my things and I'm going to pick one. Now I want the same things to be here, here, and here. So I have to be a little bit careful. I am going to do another variable at this time. I'm going to have this be my which one. So I'll just drag up another variable. And this is not going to be an array. It's going to be a whole number because my index is a whole number. I'm going to call this one which one. This is where I'm going to get my random number. So I'm going to start it at zero, but I'm going to be assigning it something in here. Let's go ahead and change this to things as well. And I could do all of them. So I'm going to use my array right here. I want to get a random number for which one and use it right here. So this is also part of my loop, so I'm going to use my assign tile. I'm going to assign which one a number. I just start with a placeholder. Now I can make this a random number. It's going to be from zero but excluding. Now how many aliens do I have? I have four. So my number is going to be four. So I start at zero and I don't include four, but it'll be index zero, one, two, or three. So it's going to pick which one, and then I'm going to use which one right here. And I want to use it. Oops, it's the wrong one. Which one? So this is just a variation of how we've done random um, items from an array before. I've got two variables, so I can even put in some comments for my variable section and my programming section. So our code looks all nice and easy. So I've got my two variables, my array and my whole number. I'm going to get a random number every time in my loop. And it's going to pop it up. And I've, so I've got random numbers all over, all over the place. Games are like that. So let's give it a try. Oh, and now that I've added more, I need to hide all of them. So here I have aliens hide. I could even do this in a loop. I want each of them in together at the same time. Okay. So I've got my biped thing, and the array is things. So I want all of them to hide. So I'm going to pick the hide. And then remember that last step, I have to use thing in order for it to happen. So all of them should hide. You can get rid of this one. Let's try it again. They all hid. Here's my introduction. So you can see that they're kind of all over the place. Okay. And then I didn't have enough. Now what's going to get a little trickier is here because I'm not just doing just this alien anymore. I need to have a mouse click for all my aliens. So instead of just one mouse click, I will have four. 
you get all that work uh, put together, then your clicking should work. Okay, one last thing that we can add is a, an easy, medium, or hard. And to do that, I could ask the person, so I'm going to have another variable for level of difficulty. I'm going to drag that up here. This is going to be level. I'm going to start it at zero. Then I'm going to ask the person, so I'm going to assign Okay, so after the intro, I might ask them easy, medium, or hard. Okay, so here's a level. And I'm going to get an integer from the user. And I can give them prompts like one is easy, two is medium and three is hard. Then I can use this level in an if statement to determine the amount of the delay. Okay. So I'm going to drag up an if statement here after I get the level and this is going to be on true. I mean it's going to be on level. So I've got my it's a whole number. I'm going to do equals equals. So if they picked one so here's level. So if the level is 1, then I want my duration, so I need another variable. Let's put duration here. And this is going to be a decimal number. But I'm going to start at 0. Well, I'll start at anything. It doesn't matter. Okay, so I've got my, so if level is 1, then I'm going to assign my duration to maybe the longest, like 2 seconds. So duration is going to be 2. Okay. Then I can have another if. If, and I'm going to put level again, so I have whole number equals, so if level equals 2, then I might sign duration to 1.5. Okay, so that'll be custom. So that'll be medium. And then I'll have a third if statement. Okay, and so this time, whole number equals. So if this time if level is three, the hardest would be a shortest duration. So I might set duration at one. So I've got three different speeds here, and now I'm going to, instead of having a random duration, I'm going to change this to my variable duration. So this is a way to kind of use some more concepts from Chapter 5. So I'm going to ask them, easy, medium, or hard, and then I'm going to assign the duration and use that in my loop. Okay, so if I do easy, everything should appear for two seconds. And I haven't uh, changed my mouse click yet, so you didn't see them all clicking. I would have to include many mouse clicks, remember? But these are many different ways that you can vary your program and make it uniquely yours. So think what you can, add some things to it, and have a great time with your program.